So last week we started our discussion on the Sefer Ma'ar Einayim, which was printed in Mantaba and Shin Lamedalit by Azariah de Rossi, Rabbi Azariah Mina Um And the trouble that uh, the Sefer brought upon it. We quoted a Chida in the Machzik Bracha in the in Simon Shin Zion, where he brings down the Nusach HaCherem, which ostensibly was going to be signed by the Beis Yosef two days prior to his death, but alas, it never happened, the Beis Yosef passed away. So I want to continue a discussion on the Moirei Naim before we go into other subjects regarding banned books. I just want to be marked them like two interesting thoughts that I... Um, Sir. I'm just going to mute everybody, you see, for, uh, again, one second, mute all, option to talk. Okay, there we go. Now, I want to just be mocked in two hakdamas that I think are somewhat germane to our discussion. One is, is that it's um, relatively common that books are banned, and I think that in the history of books that were banned, secular books, Often, the ban does, in fact, most of the times, the ban does the opposite of what the intention of the banner is. The ban actually gives notoriety to something that's a little bit obscure, and it makes people interested, it piques their interest, and if anything, it catapults the book into fame that it might ordinarily not deserve. One such example is a, was a little-known author by the name of Salman Rushdie, who printed the Satanic Verses, um, which seemingly is an anti-Islam treatise. And if not for the fatwa against his life, probably the book would have um, been printed and it would have died a relatively ignominious death. But the powers that be in the Islamic world felt that it was such an offense and they put out a fatwa. And I think that catapulted him to some international fame. And the book is a very popular book still till today. Um, other examples of such situations are even in um, children's books. Most people who have kids know the Dr. Zeus series. This was uh, actually a misanthropic individual whose name was Theodore Geisel, who never had children, but he wrote very clearly and cleverly for children. And one famous story that he wrote was about the Lorax. And it was a conservationist story against logging and against deforestation. and in a, in a state, ironically, as liberal as California, it seems that some of the school boards banned the Lorax in 1988 or 89, when it came out thinking that it would show the concept of logging in a very negative fashion, and it was banned. Ultimately, that became one of Dr. Zeus's most famous pieces of work. It became a movie. It became very celebrated because Possibly the ban was helpful to catapult it to a certain notoriety level. It's also, um, most of you will know, The Giving Tree. The Giving Tree was a book written, a, a little children's book written by Shel Silverstein. Not a good person. Um, Shel Silverstein, if you read about him, lived a very decadent life. Yet he wrote a very touching and deep, profound story in The Giving Tree about a boy who keeps coming back to the tree to get something more meaningful. It starts with apples, eventually it's branches that make him a kite, and eventually the tree gets transformed into a boat, and he sails far and wide, doesn't find what he's looking for, comes back as an old man to put his feet on the stump of a tree. Well, again, school departments in California in mass saw this as a sexist book. They saw it only as a man, with the tree as a masculine, and it was banned for some time from some school districts. Ultimately, I think that catapulted it probably to the front view of many people interested, and it got the notoriety that it reasonably deserved. Um, and Chahena V'Chahena, John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men, was banned because it had a mercy killing in it. The bans generally work to get the opposite effect, the opposite of the desired effect. Not so in Jewish literature. In Jewish literature, it's not a ban, it's a cherem. And charamim often have a very strong effect as seen in the Sefer Mo'ere Naim, which 
was a good safer in theory, was popular by some people, some Chachamim really loved it, but the possibility of this cloud on title, this harem that hovered over the Moirei Naim, sort of relegated it to the point where most people today, when you say Moirei Naim, think Chernobyl. They don't think at all of Azaria de Rossi. Yet, in Sunzi's biography, Yontif Lipman Sunz, Leopold Sunz's biography, um, which is a small monograph on Azariah and Adumim, he brings down a whole host of people that quoted him, quoted him with reverence. Again, it's true that uh, Rav Moshe Provencali, a godel of his time, went out against him. It's true that the Ramami Fano did not like him. It's true that the Maharal in the Beragoyla chapter six was very, he writes, uh, he writes, uh, he, he writes very strongly against him. Yet the Maharal's own Talmud, the Tzemach, David, Rabbi David Gans, does quote Rabbi Zari Minadum in multiple times. Yes, sometimes he denies it, sometimes he accepts it. And the Tesis Yantiv, well, I'm not sure if he was the Maral's Talmud, but he certainly uh, knew and understood the Maral's uh, um, uh, disavowal of the Sefer. Tesis Yantiv in Menachis in Perak Yud Mishneh Gimel. Now, interesting, you have to know, in the Mishnayis Menachis, Perak Yud, is uh, is is the parak on 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 um, on Oimer. It should really be parak vav. There's a mix. There's a, there's a switch. So it's if you would be looking it up, it would be parak vav. But it's parak yud mishnah gimel. He brings down a very clear pirush that he found in the in the Moire naim about the difference between stukim and baisusim, and he's very committed to it. Thinks it's a wonderful pirush. So you see many in the I would say mainstream brought. Um, Yerushim down from Menachem Azariah, yet it was not accepted. The cherem is very effective. And when there's cloud on title, it seems to relegate a book to the back burner in a way that it doesn't recover from it. During the time of the Rashba, there was Chachamim, there were Chachamim from Montpellier, there were philosophers, and they were studying a certain type of rationalism in the Torah. One was Rabbi Natoli Mori, I think he wrote Malmada Talmidim, the Rashba had not even a major cherem, it was a quasi cherem. And it relegated the Sefer to the point where it was first printed in the, in the 1800s in Lick, a, a, a printing of the Malmada Talmidim. Interestingly, the, the um, Reb, 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 uh, Azaria de Rossi was very interested in his Sefer becoming accepted. He did not want it to be um, Yoshev Bottle in the bookshelf. And he went to the Chachamim that had tainus on him and he tried very hard to curry favor with them. And they were machlit that if he pulls out eight pages from the Sefer, which is offensive, and we'll go through some of the issues briefly, eight pages if he pulls them out um, and he attaches in a new printing the, um, the Sefer Matzreif Lakesef, which is nine pages of the Chachame, the Chachme Azman's rebuttal to him and his answer, then fine, they'd be okay, provided that the person who's reading the book would get permission from some Adam Godel. There has to be a permission slip to read the book. The Ad Kedekach was the restriction on Rav Menachem, uh, on, on, on Rav Azariah de Rossi. And he did it. And in fact, in most editions, you cannot find the eight pages that are questionable. The eight pages are Pei Aleph, Pei Beis, Pei Zayin, Pei Ches, Nun Aleph and Nun Beis, and one or two before and after. Um, and I saw once a, a facsimile, a copy of some of these permission slips that were given to individuals that were interested in reading um, Azaria de Rossi's work. This, this, they're interesting. Uh, Lashoinus, I think, may have been a might have had a collection of some of these permission slips. Okay, so here I'm trying to explain one Nikuda Aleph, a Cherem works in uh, Sifrei Kodesh. The second thing I want to point out is like this, is that sometimes we're going to find, and I want to point this out, that a specific grievance that was um, levied against the Moire Naim by the Chachme Azman, we're going to find other Gedolim say the same exact thing, yet it was accepted from them, but it wasn't accepted from him. I think it's very important to note that in the Shkofas HaMesorah of Kla Yisrael, often it very much matters who you are, whether what you're saying will be accepted or not. I'll give you a simple few examples. For example, there is a Maram Shif that posits a Heter, albeit only Derech Efsher, but he discusses the possibility of liver being fried in butter, not being called basa b'chalav. 
The Prima Godim says, I do not believe such a thing ever came out of his mouth. But it's there in the end of Chulin, one could look it up, and it was never taken out. Clearly, the Maram Shif has a thought that liver is not meat and butter is not cheese and butter is not milk. Um, the Bissamim Reish, in one of his Chubas, advances the same idea to the great chagrin of anybody that reads it, and they recognize in him a Kaldas. Um, the Yenoide Yehuda Kayadua, advanced the uh, Heter um, on, uh, 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 for a person who needed a shave on Chalamoid, if he shaved before Yontif, to be able to shave through a person who needs the money, a poor barber could shave him on Chalamoid. Um, everybody was upset with this heter. This heter garnered a tremendous amount of press. The Noyed Behuda wasn't pushed away from his very prestigious spot amongst the Meshiva Hazman, yet the Besamim Reish, when he wrote something similar in his Besamim Reish, was seen as a Kaldas a uh, very strong uh, makel in Yisurim. And last but not least, is known that the Yaivitz in uh, Moiruk Tzia and Simen Tofnun Gimel brings from his father that rice on Pesach really isn't problematic. Rice on Pesach, kidney is, it's not such a big deal. He really wants, he have a bechela, a baklinu, I would be mevato the whole thing. Um, and that's where the, uh, the Ashkenazis, uh, and the Yaivitz would see themselves la halacha. Nobody denies the Yaivitz's greatness, nor does anybody impugn the credibility of the Chacham Tzvi. Yet the Bissamim Reish, when he brings the same Kula down, clearly is seen as a Kaldas. So in Yiddishkeit, it's very important who you are before you say something. Who you are matters terrifically. And in our day and age, we also got to see such a case. Um, uh, in the in the 60s, Rabbi Shlomo Goren, chief rabbi of Israel, was mated to Mamzerim to retroactively to retroactively taking away the Jewishness of their original father Borakovsky by showing that he was not at all a true convert, and all the Chachme Azman the Gedol Ador went out against him. Conversely, today there is an individual whose name is Rabbi Chaim Amsalem who was a Knesset member and a Talmud Chochem of note, wrote a few sparring, but apparently he doesn't garner the same credibility. And he tried to, he tried to, 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 to employ the G'daylum of that time's position by saying that once a Jew, it could, it could not, it's, not, it's never annulled. And he wanted to allow Russian soldiers who were killed in the Israeli battles to be buried in Jewish cemeteries, even though there is a question on title, there's a question on their gerus. But he felt that once they gave their life for the country, that is a cementing of the Kabbalah's mitzvahs. And his position was not accepted. So it really depends who you are. Very much depends who you are because I like to say that our, our um, religion is a, is a Messiah. And the chains of the Messiah are very important. And in order to be able to establish yourself as a Paisik, and in order to be able to, to, to establish your credibility, you have to be a robust link in that chain. Like the Rambam lists the Moisra HaMesayra, these are robust links in the chain. And loikol haroitza lita l'sashem, yovei It's not for everybody. And therefore, if we're going to find Rav uh, Azariah de Rossi says something, and we're going to find the Yaivet says something, well, by one, it's going to be accepted because he's a cholia in that sharsheres. He's a link in the chain. By other one, it will not be accepted. I like to always explain that um, Hillel was Moisa Nefesh on a snowy day got covered in snow, to look down and to see Shmaya and Avtalian, to hear Torah right from their mouth through the skylight. Why did he do that? Why didn't he wait till nighttime where he could download the Shear from a friend? Why did he have to be Moisa Nefesh, to be Mafkir himself, to look directly at Shmaya and Avtalian? And the answer is because Hillel saw himself as a Chulia in this Sharsheris. Hillel saw himself as a link in this chain. And Hillel understood that if he's a link in the chain, he has to get the information really clearly. And the only way to do that is to see, to hear, to read the inflection, to hear the tonality, and to see the hand gestures. Other than that, you're not getting the clarity and you cannot be a Julia in this Sharsheresh, which is called Messiah. So two points I'm making. One is a ban works on Jewish books. And the other is 
It really matters who says what. It really matters who says what. And that's what I want to focus on right now. Now, um, the, the, uh, the um, Azaria, the Maori Naim in Perak Chof, talks about the concept of Guzmois in Chazal. There's a tremendous amount of hyperbole he feels Chazal engage in. And he brings down a list of Shitin Rahuti, Shitin Tachli, Shitin Pulsa Denura. The number 60, he feels, is always an exaggerated number. And same, he feels, with the number 300. Sometimes you find the number 300 is used as an exaggeration. And he wants to say that these Guzmois are very, very common. But where he goes with this is a very interesting spot. And in my mind, he's actually helpful. And it's, um, it's a very wonderful thing, an effective thing that he does. But he goes on to Zoyar in Parshas uh, Emor. I think it's in Parshas Emor. The, the Zoya says, Haiman de Oishet Zare Berekna, Leichomi Pnei Shrinta. Which means, again, this is not a children's show, so I'm just going to say it quickly and clearly. If somebody is Moitzi Zera Levatale, he'll never be able to do tshuva. There is no tshuva for that. The Zoya is very machbid, and the Zoya is very strong, Kineged Bisavera. This is considered a. Um, so Azaria says, listen, you see this Guzmois and Chazal. Azaria says, you find many different situations that are mugzam in Chazal. And he brings um, some positive, some negative. He says, this is just Chazal's effort and intention to put a very big emphasis on this sin. But chas v'shalom, nobody should think that anything is beyond tshuva. It's a very, I would say, uplifting and very nice concept. Yet, this was something that irked the ire of the morale, something awful. He writes a lush, and I wrote it down. He says, um, He says, uh, the morale is very upset at Azaria's statement that this is a guzma. Azaria says, when it says in the Gemara and Shabbos, it doesn't mean that a person is going to be ridiculously wealthy just because he's good to Shabbos. See how many people buy wonderful food for Shabbos and a dirt poor. It just means Chazal want you to be Mahanik the Shabbos. And they're saying it. I used to have a Lashon and Shir. I used to say to, to, to people, if you could answer this, I'll give you on a Shir Gelt. I don't mean I'm going to give them any money. I don't even have money to give them. What I mean to say is you'll be Mahanik me very much if, if you'll answer it. Uh, he continues by saying that um, the Isra of Lashon Hara, he says, you see the Gemaras and Erech and Lashon Hara so Chomer, it says, Rav Yechanan says, there's words about Lashon Hara that are so strong and so stringent. He says, and, and, and he doesn't believe it's true. And quite interestingly, there is no Sibman and Shulchan Aruch on Lashon Hara. Nobody discusses them. The Morgan of Raman Simon Kufnan Vav, when he gives the list of things that aren't brought down in Shulchan Aruch, Lashon Aruch is one of them. It's Bechlal not brought down. It's not, it's not mentioned in Shulchan Aruch. So Azaria says Lashon Hara, um, it sounds like he's saying is not as strict. Shabbos is not going to reward you as much as it says. And so Azara is not going to put you in Gehenim forever. Do tshuva, treat Shabbos well. Don't talk Lashon Hara. Chazal say it in their words. This was upsetting to the morale beyond, beyond, beyond the reconciliation. And it's interesting because these, these are Gemaras. Dibru Chazal, Bishleisha Mekoymis, Dibru Chacham and Belash Navoy is a Gemara in Chul and Daf Tzadik. Azariah quotes this Gemara. Bishleisha Mekoymis, Dibru Chacham and Belash Navoy. The question is whether Havai means just like, uh, like, like hyperbolic or Havai just means whether it's with a Vav or with a Vez. I'm not discussing that right now, but Havai generally means, the concept of Havai means it's dumb talk. It's not real. It's not anchored in reality. The Shloisha Mekayim, the Gemara says, Dibra Torah Belash Navai. The Gemara says, Dibra Orem Bitsuris Ada Shamayim. It says that the Meraglim went in and they saw fortified cities up to the heaven. 
no fortification. Even the wall of China doesn't go up to the heaven. And it says, It says, It says, It says that the ground opened up to the sound of the music of the anointing of Shleimah in Malachim Aleph. No, 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 no sound opens up the ground. Obviously, it's Dibru Nevi'im Belosh Navai. And B'Shloi Shem Ekoim is Dibru Chachamim Belosh Navai. There's a mission in Midis, a mission in Tamid, a mission in Shkolim, three places. It talks about something that required 300 Kainanim to do. I'll, I'll, I'll mention them briefly. It says there was a Tapuach in the middle of the Mizbeach that gathered ashes from all the Karbonis. And this Tapuach one time had 300 Kur of refuse on top of it, until they finally had to get rid of it. It says that there was a, there was a, there was a, um, uh, uh, almost like a sculpture of Geffen, Kimin Geffen in the Pesach of the Beis Amigdash. And everybody used to put little um, gold leaves on the, they used to donate gold. It says that Maisev Behutzrechu Gimel Meis Kohanim to move it. They needed 300 Kohanim to move it. it. Sounds like it's so large, it's so tremendous. Baruchas, it says, the, the, the Mishnah in Midas says, Baruchas was, a tremendous weave with a lot of tapestry, a tremendous amount of thread. And my said, you require 300 kohanim in order to dip it into the mikvah. The Gemara says on all these cases, they're all havai, they're all hyperbolic. And Menachem and, and Azaria de Rossi is, is, is telling you very clearly, I'm borrowing a page from the Gemara. It's hyperbole. I'm borrowing a page from the Gemara. Hyperbole there, hyperbole in the Shechazer Levatola, hyperbole on Shabbos, hyperbole on Lashon It's hyperbole. And to this, the Maral says, the Lashon that he says, V'zeho ish ba'agiyoi l'maymar zeh makil merapit b'reik ta'afa le'ma guzma. Ve'in ze guzma l'chok magadoyla. So I just want to tell you something interesting. Years ago, I once, um, I, I, I didn't locate it now, but I read an article um, and and uh, on this Gemara, the Gemara specifically tells us the Torah says Guzma, the Nevi'im say Guzma, Chachamim say Guzma. There's the Ramamifano, there's the Gro, there's the Yaivitz, uh, there's Rebruvim. No one concedes that the Gemara's Guzma is a real Guzma. They all argue on the Gemara. It's very interesting. The Ramamifano says, yeah, the Gemara says it's a Guzma, but let me explain to you what it means. Aram Bitsuris Adla Shamaim, again, I'm quoting the Ramami Fano Chuba and Gimel, you can look it up. Aram Bitsuris Adla Shamaim just means that just like it's fortified here, down here, Boilam Azeh, there's also Sarim and Vulim up, up in Shamaim. And he says the Ayin Malachim and the Ayin Sarim of all other Umas cannot get in to the wall around Eretz Israel in the Eretz Yisrael Shalmaila. That's what it means, B'tzur Esat L'Shamayi. And he says, Batibaka Aretz L'Koylem, he says, Eretz Yisrael is Eretz Atzvi. It expands, it contracts, and there is such a thing that the music made it expand. Okay, whatever, in Kabbalah and in Kabbalah. And he says, and, the, and, and, and he says a beautiful pshat for the, uh, for the uh, Gefen, and for the Paroiches, and for the, for the uh, Tapuach. He says, the Gemara is just referring to one time that there were 300 Kohanim present during the evacuation of this Geffen, this gold Geffen. One time that there were 300 Kohanim present during the Tvila of this Paroiches. Some of them were carrying and laboring with the actual item. Others were watching, others were directing, some were cheering on. One time there was 300. And that's why the Gemara brings, Mai says, Shehotzrechu. But not that always it was necessary, not that it be, not that it even needed, not that it even needed uh, um, 20, 30, it was, it was a cloth. But one time, this is what happened. The Gemara wants to give Shivas to this item. That's the Lashon of Guzma. And he concludes this tshuva by writing, Hine Borchu Es Hashem. Hey, Beis, Reish, Hey is Havoi. He says, that's what Havoi is. Havoi is Hine Borchu Es Hashem. This is the Ramah. So ironic that where the Gemara says Guzma, and the Gemara is trying to show you that no, there are times when the Sukkim talk, in Brachas, Gemara is all over Shas. Um, when the Gemara says Havoi, on a Pasuk, in Navi, in Torah, three Mishnas, me, the Shkolem, and Tamit, here, the Ramah, and the Gro, the Gro has such a fascinating shot. I didn't understand it, so it brought down. The Gro is a fascinating shot about the exact amount of thread and the exact amount of weave, and the Taka required 
each person to hold a tefach of this tapestry, and your mamish needed 300. The going practically learns not like the Gemara, which is an unbelievable, which is an unbelievable thing. The Gemara says Guzma, the guy says not at all in Guzma. He's mecholik with the Shas. Um, Reb Ruvain Margolius, I think, Kedarka, he says every time there's a number in Shas, you always have to question where the Shin is um, Shmoinim, Tov is Tishim. He says this on Rav Preda, the famous Gemara in in Erevin, where Rav Preda was teaching a Talmud who was slow-witted, obviously, and he taught him 400 times. And uh, one time Rav Preda told him, I have a mitzvah I have to go to, so the Talmud couldn't help cut, couldn't put together, you know, one brain cell to the next. And 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 finally Rav Preda asked him, what's wrong? He says, I shite the that you have to go. I, I couldn't learn anymore. So Rav Preda says, no, have died, child. I'll stay here till you know it. And they offered Rav Preda a reward, either that he and his daughter will be zeichet or he'll live 400 years. He picked Eilam Abba and he got both. Rav Ruven Margolius asked a simple kasha. Rav Preda was a Talmud of Rav. If he lived 400 years, he would have been alive during the time of Rav Sadia going. There would have been a mention of it. There would have been something. He would have been Paisha Sveikas. He would have been the Yash of Shailas. Elamai, you're telling me he was in a nursing home from 60 till 400? What kind of schus is that? So he says, obviously, tough doesn't mean 400 years. Tough means tishin. And it wasn't common for people to live that old. He lived a very ripe old age, just like Rav Yechonan in the Seyde Yuchsim, in the Yechusei Tanam Vamiroim, it says Rav Yechonan lived 300 years. He also would have been during the time of the Goinim, and we never heard anything like that. Rav Yechonan never... Uh, appeared to any going or anything like that. So, Pashtas, um, the Pashtas, the understanding is uh, Shin or Tuf is either Shmainim or Tishim. And it's very possible that this would have been over here also. Agam, no, it says clearly Guzma, so it's not really such an acceptable model. It's just ironic that in, in, um, in, uh, in the Gemara, that the Gemara sets itself out to talk about Guzma here, Achreinim and uh, Kadmainim, show that it's not a guzma b'chlal. And now the rabbi, hine baruch hu sashem. Just before we move on to the actual nekuda over here, I want to say like this, that, um, that, uh, that um, the, uh, okay, well, let's move on. It's, 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 it'll be a waste of time. Now, it's interesting. It's interesting that they critique the Mara Naim on the fact that he says things are like Kipshutai, but then they also bring Pshatim. Right, like- so, that, so, so that's what I wanted to say. I, I want to say like this. Uh, that was my Akdama. The Ramami Fano is a Chulia in the Sharshara Samasaira. No one could take it away from him. We have Psakim al Gabi Psakim, all from his Chuvis, all from his uh, Sifre Kabbalah. That's it. And once you're a Chulia in the Sharshara, you could say, you could say, that's it. And, and that's why I started. I said, Bands work, and Bayes, the second thing I said, what and who you are really matters. What and who you are really matters. That's why Hillel was very mocked to hear everything so he could be this holy in the Messiah. And I'm gonna tell you furthermore, I wanna tell you something very powerful. There's a Sefer called Sefer Habris. It was written by Pinchas, by Mivilna. Vilna was where he came from originally, but he was in, Gal- he was in Buchach. And um, I have a, a copy of this Sefer. It's, this is the Sefer Abris, I don't know if you can see it, the Sefer Abris. It was printed in Tovkov Nun Zayin, which is 1857. It was printed in 1857, uh, I'm sorry, 1795, and 1795. And it was printed by a non-Jewish print house. It says, in their privilegitirin, um, Yosef Karl Neimansch, Hebraish und Deutsche Kampagne, Buchdruckerei. And this is Tovkov Nunzayim, which is 1795. I want to tell you about this individual because very rare do you find a book that's written, printed by Elam Shem. Um, it's almost like a little, uh, I don't want to say it, it's almost like a little cowardly to write a book by Elam Shem. To write a book without putting your name on it the Chofetz Chaim, when he wrote his Chofetz Chaim, he didn't put his name on it. And some of the Rabbanim that were supposed to give us commas didn't want to give him us commas. They felt it was almost, uh, you know, it was hubris. 
he proved himself to be who he was, and mainly he got the askarma that he deserved and became what he became. But the Sefer Abris published the, the Sefer for the first time without any name. There are others from Rav Shmuel Abua published the Sefer Azichroinus without uh, his name in it. And the reason for that was is because it was a scathing Musar treatise, and probably he felt that it would be much safer for him and for the other work that he was doing if he wouldn't publicize that it was his name. But rarely do you find somebody publishing something without their name. In fact, the Reikeach, an early Rishon from Ashkenaz, says it's incumbent on a person to put his name in the Sefer and the name of the Sefer, okay? So why did Eliyahu ben Pinchas of Vilna, whose Sefer was wildly popular, today we don't know it so well, but I have to tell you, one of the most popular Sparum in history, reprinted over 40 times, between, thir between 35 and 40 times, it's a Sefer that dedicates itself to teaching Jewish people so many different disciplines, zoology, philosophy, philology, uh, um, uh, numerology, astrology. He wants Kal Yisrael to have a secular education through this Sefer. And why? He doesn't want them, in his words, to look like donkeys in the eyes of the Gentiles. Sometimes a Jew comes and he's sitting amongst non-covenantals and he sounds like an absolute donkey. He has nothing to say. He has nothing to talk about in popular culture. He knows nothing. So he says, I'll give you a Jewish source and I'll show you exactly how to talk, how to understand some of the things that he works through are the basic mechanisms of a, a thermometer, of a barometer, of a, he has, he, he was very known. And also anatomy, medicine, he talks very much about immunization. It was a very hush of a sefer, reprinted many times. Chassam Sefer loved this sefer. In the Chut HaMeshulish, the Chassam Sefer um, promoted the sefer very much so people should have whatever handle they could have in uh, secular education through a Jewish source. Obviously, he's also very committed to Kabbalah. And whenever the Kabbalah negates science, he sides with the Kabbalah, which is what we'd accept, what we'd expect, I'm sorry, we'd expect that. Um, and in his Akdama, he writes that the reason, I would love to read it for you, if you don't mind, it'll take me a second, but he writes like this, I write without putting my name. I'm not doing this because of modesty or because of a certain false piety. I'm doing this because of a certain story. Now again, he died when he was 56 years old. So this book he was writing when he was in his 30s. I'll tell I'll paraphrase. He says, I was so excited to write this book. I wrote morning, night, day. I didn't pay attention to lighting and my eyes went on me. I slowly lost my eyes. It was devastating to me, he says. I couldn't come to myself. Then I remembered, he says, there are pious people that make nedarim be'es tzara. They make vows during the time of difficulty. And I made a vow that if my eyes would come back to me, if my eyes would come back to me, I would be makriv this book on the altar of God without any fame and notoriety. I would just give it as like a minchas taida. And therefore I, 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 I wrote the book and I scrapped my name because my eyesight did come back to me. It was a miraculous um, rehabilitation. His eyesight did come back to me after making this prayer. And uh, his eyes had did come back to him after making this prayer. And to keep his nether, he published the Sefer without his name. He said, then I was alerted that if I do this, there's a possibility somebody will usurp this, say it's him, and he'll publish my book, my work, make money off my labor. And that's not right. Uh, there's a possibility that um, I'm actually being I'm being martial people. I'm hurting people. I'm giving them temptation to do this. So he says, therefore, to circumvent that, I have four great Rabbanim who gave me Askamas. And in their Askamas, they write that for 15 years, nobody could republish this book. Should this book ever appear without three of the four Rabbanim's Askama, you should know it's Gonuvu Itchem. It's a stolen item. Make sure if you ever buy this book again, check if it was reprinted and it's not the 1795 edition, see that there should be three of these Rabbanim and he lists them. Other than that, it's gone. This was not a very good technique. 
And in fact, in 1801, the printer who printed his book, who was a non-Jew, saw how successful he was. He printed half the book, making believe it was the full book, with his name. He printed it the way he wanted to print it. This um, wonderful printer, whose name was Karl, Josef Karl Neimisch, printed it. I never saw an 1801 edition. I understand it's very rare. I never saw an 1801 edition, but that propelled Rav Pinchas of Vilna, Rav Pinchas ben Elio, to write and publish this book in 1818 and to call it a new name. It was from then on called Sefer Abris HaSholem because he published the whole book and he impugned Naiman by saying Naiman's a thief. He impugned Naiman by, uh, by saying Naiman only published half the book. And then he put his name in it saying in his Akdama of the 1818 edition that he was Martin Neder and he um, is sorry for not putting his name originally, but now we know who it is and everybody's comfortable that it's Pinchas Ben Elio of Vilna. Okay, this is what he writes in his book. You have to know that when Azariah writes, Haiman de Oishet Zara Bereikna, somebody who spills his seed improperly, will never see the face of the Shechina. So the Yaivitz in his Mitpachas Sforim, the Yaivitz, that's again Rav Yaakov Emdin, in his, in his book, which is against the Zoyar, which is a whole different discussion, it's not for now. The Yaivitz is of the belief that the Zoyar has a lot of extraneous matter in it, yeah, no, it's a different discussion. And he has over 300 proof in his Sefer Mitbach Farm. So in that Sefer, I think it's page 20, he writes like this. He says, listen, he says, the Zoya writes that someone who spills seed improperly has no tshuva. He says, I want you to know, he says, um, there's no love in the Torah on this. It's a story in Bereshis about Aaron Oinan. How is it possible that something that doesn't even have a shaldova she'ein by loisa say greida ela mechlola nigmar. It's only learned from a story. Begama Talmud hechmer alav, but mikomukad minias tshuva. How's it possible? He says like this loishamanu chalila umi yishma loy ladovaze. He writes this about this day. Who'll even listen to him about this? Now here I want to tell you this. Here, look at the next lash. I quote you. That's Mitbachas Farm. Even if God Himself said it, you can't accept it. I mean, that to me sounds like heresy. He says, I'll read it again. And he continues, he says, Kemai mara chachomim, kol ma shiyoyim alucho balabayis asei chutz mitzei. That happens to be beautiful. <laughs> He's quoting the Gemara in Erevin, which the Meiri says is ago asal eitzonim. Kemai mara chachomim, kol ma shiyoyim alucho balabayis, everything the Master tells you, asei chutz mitzei. He tells you to leave, you're out of the fray, don't listen. So Azaria said much less. Azaria was much more measured. Azaria was just giving hope to Balei Tshuva and letting them know that, yeah, there is hyperbole in the Shas. Azaria was Muhram, and his book was printed since it was published in Shin Lamed Dalet two or three times. But the Yaivitz ain't points a pel It matters who you are. It matters who you are. It matters who you are. And the Sefer Abris writes, the Sefer Abris is very upset at this Yaivitz. And he writes something interesting. You have to know, I'll just tell you a brief Akdama, that for many years, in the 1500s, 1600s, there was very big debate exactly how a baby gets developed. There were spermists, there were ovists. There were people that believed everything is in the sperm. There were people that thought everything is in the egg, in the, in the ovum. Um, and when Van Leeuwenhoek created the microscope, there were people that were spermists or ovis that some, somehow convinced themselves that they saw a little boy in every sperm molecule. They saw movement, it's true, they saw motility, but they were so obsessed with the concept of spermism 
that they convinced themselves that they saw little children. Ad Kedekach Catholicism took the idea that Adam contained all the sperm of the generations that will come out forever and ever, thus explaining original sin. There was a tremendous amount. Now, and I'm telling you that on some level, the Seif Abris is buying into that because he writes like this. He says, Hamoilid, the one that, the Koyach Hamoilid, who are Koyach Asher Sam, Kale, Betipa Zera, Shela Odom. Lios Moilid, Bidmusai, Betsalmai, Lekium, Minoi. Okay, he says, Vikvar Nira Bechush, this is already visible. He's after Van Leeuwenhoek. He says, Alidei Klei Habota Hamegadalis are Ois Bemoid. Through microscopes, you could see, Hanikra Makroscopi. He says, it's called a microscope. Betipas hazera shal adam. Be'oide b'chami musa. If it's still somewhat warm, you could see. Briyos k'tanim me'oid. You see small creations. Kidmus b'tzalma shal abalchai. You could see if John donates. You see John. Little John's there. You see little Bob's there. Ve'im chayim. They're alive. U'mis no'ayim. Ona ve'ona te'chatipa. Okay, he says, On this Maimar that the Zoya says, There's no, there's nobody as guilty as someone who does this that doesn't get to see the Shrina. He says, um, and because of Uzal Kahailish, Ilu Amrua Kodesh Baruchu Ba'atzmai, Ain Lim Noya Minat Shuba. It's not what he says, he says it a little stronger. Neshikoma Shiemel Chabalabais as Echutz Mitzay. He says, and the, and the Sefer Abris uh, rejects it, he doesn't like it, he's upset with it. Um, the Kitzer, the, the upshot of our discussion is, is that. In my understanding, when Azaria de Rossi's treatment of this Zoya was far more mild than the Ivitz's treatment of this Zoya. And he was Mukhram, and he's actually, the, the, the Ivitz is actually quoted in many, many Sfarim as a Mahalach of Chizik for people who need to be Mechuzik. What, 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 what Azaria was trying to do, the Ivitz did. Azaria was not accepted. The Ivitz was accepted. Who you are matters very much. And it makes sense. The Ivitz comes with the Svarim al Gabi Svarim and so many Miktsois in Shas and Halacha that when he says something like this, it has a gravitas of a God Lador, whereas Azaria doesn't have that gravitas. Um, thank you so much for listening. This will conclude the. Uh, discussion of the Moire Naim. And um, the next time we get together, we'll uh, do a different safer or a different topic. Thank you very much. If I recall correctly, the uh, the Rachashulchan brings this in Ebenezer. Ezer. Nachon, nachon, true. Uh, the Shla is a, there's a number of Mekilim in this. There's a number, the, even the Shla was a Machma. The, 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 the um, Shalza Chubis Pnei Yeshua, the, the Shvusyankif, there's a lot of Mekilim that explain to Balchuva or to somebody that feels bad that, hey, the, and, and you have to know something interesting. I didn't discuss this right now, but you have to know that there is a Shilte Giboyrim in the end of the first parak of Avoid Zora that breaks down the Midrash Chazal into three, um, to three, uh, to three, uh, three folders. That means, what he says is like this. He says, you have Midrashim that are complete Lashon Havayin Guzma. He buys into that. Rabbi Shaya Boyaz, he says, there are Midrashim that are Havayin Guzma. He takes the Gemara and Chum Dav Tzadik, literally, seriously, he says Havayin Guzma. Um, he says, then there's other Gemaras, like the Gemaras of Rabbi Bar Barchan and Amor Chesasfina, like the Gemaras in uh, Rav Beno and Daphnon Ches and Baba Basra. Gemaras where interesting people saw very amazing things. He doesn't anchor himself to say whether it's a chaloim or whether it's real. All he says is it's something unique to these people that they saw, and it's nothing for everybody. The Gilui Elio that uh, Rav Shila saw in Subis Kofei, all those 
is of the second folder. Those are, those, are, those are concepts which are for some people, in some cases, in some situations, and the love, it's, it's it, love kol adam zeicha lekach, and we're not even sure whether it's, um, whether it's, uh, it's real or b'chalon. And then he says, and this is very interesting, he says, you have the third, which is just chazal's um, mahalach, to show emphasis. That means, achas dibe shnaim shamanu. I'll give you an example. I hate to do this. Uh, maybe Moish will erase this from whatever will go on online. But those that are familiar with the Godfather, there's a, there's, there's a, there's a, it's a, it's a, it's a secular reference. But there's a, a story there where, where um, the Godfather is meeting with uh, a Turkish uh, business partner, and the Turkish guy says, "How about we do drugs?" And the Godfather says, "No, nope, I don't do drugs. I don't do that garbage." But his oldest son is sitting there, and he says, "Why not? We should do drugs." And um, the godfather admonishes his son for talking out of turn. And after the Turkish guy leaves, the godfather yells at him. He says, what you did now is tantamount to killing me. Why? All I said is why? No, no, no. What this guy heard and what you said are two different things. What he heard is that if I get rid of the old man, I can do business with the new godfather. What you said is what you said. What he heard is what he heard. And Kachav, afterwards in the fiction, the godfather gets shot. He survives it, but he gets shot. That's the, 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 the Shulta Gibaram is Masber. There's many different Medrashim where Chazal look at nuance and deeper meaning. Chazal understand that the movement and the direction, the trajectory of what the Torah wants is to be machmer, is to make some sort of a strictness and a stringency. And that also plays into this Zoya of Ayman, Doishit Zara Vereikna, Lechamit Neshchinte, is the understanding that Chazal did in, in, in the beginning of the second Barak and Nidan and other places, to be machmer in this issue. Um, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I think uh, the Igris Moshe uh, in a tshuva on Moetzi Zahel of Atala also uses a very strong lotion about, um, you know, that, that, that there's, no, there's no tshuva. I, I don't remember 100%. I saw it a long time Rav ago. Moshe actually, Rav Moshe actually takes a bit, of mo- bit more of a conciliatory approach. Uh-huh. Okay, I, I don't remember. It's been a long time, but I, th- I thought he also he had a very stark emotion, like there was, Listen, there was no there, there's, a, there's a not, if, if a person who needs some defenders, there's a Shavos Yankif, there's a there's a Shavos Yankif, there's a there's a Yavitz. You could go in with the whole Chavel HaPoyski, Mamish HaBezdin, Shal Chav Gimel, and they'll help him out. So the Kakoyin, so the Kakoyin. Nachon, Nachon, Nachon. The whole Sefer. Nachon, Nachon. And you do have the Goyin who says, even though Tshuva doesn't work, but Tyra works for everything. Listen, you could go in with an Amavu the Safri, that'll be a Bezdin Chav Gimel, or a Shivan Ve'echad. And, and like the Yavit says, even if Hashem said it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I can tell you that I once saw in a, in, in, in a Gemara printed Mesif the Gemara with a Mevaira Taishus in in the Chassidish Mahalach that according to Taishus there's taka, no takana on someone who's boil a, a shiksa or something like that and and they chose they chose that that uh, that Mahalach and Taishus when when a lot of Achrayim and Bichlal learned it very different. But well, Shmuel by Kekelev, you mean Saita? So I, I don't remember where, but I remember, and I was, and I said, I can't learn out of a Masif, uh, <laughs> out of a Masif de Gemara you, after that. You don't, no, you don't have to learn that Pirush and out of this Masif. No, I, 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 but you see, you see that. I hear you. Listen, agendas, agendas are, agendas are agendas. There's no question, but okay, we all have agendas. They, they couldn't say, you know, they, they couldn't, they couldn't stay on the subject. <laughs> And they had to put the, the... All right, All right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.